All right. Hey, my name is Ren May, and uh, it's been a very long while since I made uh, these sort of videos, uh, discussion videos. And honestly, everything I'm going to discuss in this video are thoughts I had about the game for a while now. You know, long before, and long before pretty much everything about this whole goddamn game, like, went into the shitter because of, you know, him. <laughs> but, uh, regardless, even after everything that's happened, I actually have a lot of nice things to say about the game in general, which, you know, may be disappointing to the people who were expecting, you know, a documentary type of video where I just grill the game and its development and just explain things that could have been done better. I'm not trying to promote the game, um, I'm just stating some things that I like and dislike and, uh, yeah, let's get to it. Yandere Simulator is a stealth assassination game that takes place in the same location, a school. While a stealth game that takes place in the same location may sound uninteresting, the game cleverly works around this limitation via consequences and how your reputation can suffer from it. If a student sees you committing murder, a number of things can happen depending on that student's persona. They can try apprehending you, run away and tell a teacher, call the cops, take a photo of you, and so on. If a student that saw you kill someone is still alive the next day, many things can happen. You'll lose a bit of reputation every day as that student now vows to expose you, you won't have access to the club that the student's a part of, or you will be kicked from that club due to them telling the club leader about you, with clubs being kind of tools to make various parts of the gameplay easier. Not to mention that because they got away and called the cops, the atmosphere at school will go down quite a bit, causing other students to be more alert of suspicious behavior, seeing dead bodies from a greater distance, and so forth. If I had to simplify it, characters have different personas that dictate how you should interact with them and how they'll react to murder and whatever. It's all pretty complicated, but it feels so seamless. Though, how does it feel to actually play? To actually commit all of these atrocities in-game? Well, if you have the patience to sit through an eternity of load time, it's pretty fun. You're given so many murder methods to play with, lighting students on fire, electrocution, drowning, and the methods I just said have different variations. It can't go without saying that there's so much variety and it's so fun to play with. However, a major criticism that people have is that all these methods are spoon-fed to you. The criteria you need to meet is laid out in a list for you to follow step by step. I don't think this ruins playing the game at all, since you'll be met with situational things you'll have to use your brain for, such as NPCs occupying a space you plan to kill someone in. Like, if you wanted to drown someone in the fountain in the courtyard, you'd have to wait at the right time so that no one catches you. Point is, being given a list does not retract your ability to think, and as someone who's acquainted with the mechanics, I can say that this is true. I mean, you can use the criteria from one method and use it for another. You can use the emetic poison to poison Osana's bento and make her sick during lunch, and have a gasoline water tank trap set on the door she's playing to leave through. She'll then get doused in gasoline, then run over to the locker room where there's a cheeky candle waiting to light things up. I mean, for crying out loud, there are multiple gameplay modes where you can have fun with the multiple distraction methods and eliminations. Some may say that it's not good game design to rely on the player's ability to have fun. Actually, no, no one would say that, that's fucking stupid. But these are only really things that you would do if you're invested enough to learn everything and choose to spice things up, which most people are not invested in to do so. If I can get a little nostalgic for a moment, when 1980s mode came out, I would always play the game like a boss rush. I remember back in 12th grade, I would download Yonsum on the school computer and just have fun playing 80s mode, blazing through the many elimination methods and, and having fun setting traps and seeing the fruits of my plans play out. It was fun. But not everything is perfect. The one major problem I have with the gameplay is that the whole week-long campaign thing is fucking pointless and boring. To be fair, needing an in-game week may be pointless for me because I played the game. I memorized where the rivals are going to be, what they're going to be doing, and what's the best time to devise my plan. But it's the fact that most of the elimination methods don't require the whole week. I understand that there are passive methods where you don't kill the rivals that do require you to use the entire length of the week, 
but they're all so boring. The rejection method, it's just you pressing buttons and seeing what happens. The gossip method, it's just you talking to NPCs about how fucking weird the rival is until they stop coming to school. The matchmaking method, it's just you doing the same repetitive tedious things for multiple days straight. Give the suitor something new to talk about, raise one of his stats, get both the rival and the suitor to meet at the same spot. Every. Single. Day. Depending on your stats, that is. The only engaging passive method is the befriend betray method, as each of the 2020 X rivals offer their own unique stealth mission. But with the 80s rivals, it's the same thing. I actually feel like Yonsen would work better if it was just a boss rush, if anything. In fact, I have a concept for a story to where that would actually make sense. Imagine it. A multi-day long culture festival, and each day you have to get rid of one of the many girls that has an eye on your senpai. It's just a small idea, but yeah, like I said, the whole week-long campaign thing for each rival kind of falls flat. Especially since that the real meat of the game lies within the violence. Granted, there is some analyzation and remembrance of the rival's routine to pull off one of these one-day murders, but I still stand by my criticism. Other than that, the game has some pretty solid replay value, if you're willing to sit through 5 minute long load screens that is. I'm actually one of those people that really like the story of Yandere Simulator. Ayana Aishi, a girl born with an unknown illness that causes her emotions to undergo an intense nullification, which really gets in the way of her feeling things, connecting with people, and overall living life. She knows that she's not normal and can't do much about it, until her mom tells her that she'll meet a boy that'll change everything. So she waits, looking forward to the day to meet that special someone that'll pull her out of the dark. And she does, finally being released from the darkness that's clouded her world for so long and so much. She revels in the fact that his mere presence makes her feel alive. Until she finds out someone's trying to take him from her. She's finally found that beacon of hope, and is she really gonna let some Asuka knockoff take that away from her? Take him away from her. The fact of the matter is, Senpai is hers, whether he likes it or not. The more that I say this out loud, this either sounds like the eulogy from a femcell or some sort of campy love song from 2014. And honestly, I think this story's fine and it fits pretty well for a game about a psychotic girl killing other girls for the love and attention of this one guy. But I do think that it's not really being taken in a very good direction. In one of the recent updates, it's revealed that instead of being an actual illness, Ayano's illness, or the Aishi absence as I love to call it, that name really should have caught on, isn't an actual condition, but is just a curse that her ancestor got from fighting a succubus demon. You can't make this up. It being an illness made it so much more interesting. Ayano having this natural part of her that causes and instigates a lot of the violent thoughts and feelings she has towards the girls trying to steal her heartthrob. But that doesn't make her a morally just character. She's still ending and ruining people's lives, as well as the fact that she has passive ways of getting them out the way, both from a gameplay and in-universe perspective. Granted, the passive methods are kind of boring, so I don't blame her which implies that she is choosing to do these things. It may just be the nature she has, but she still has choices to not be a fucking murderer, with her illness never serving as justification for her actions, but an explanation. I really do feel like that making it into a curse ruins so much, because now it's just a bunch of wishy-washy magical bullshit that doesn't really fit. Seriously, the only people that would like this story change are the Spurgs on Twitter that unironically believe that the Yandere archetype is ableist to those with BPD. Yes, the ringing in your ears is natural, there are people who unironically believe that. Obviously, even with my interpretation, someone's gonna have an issue with the story. Truth be told, I don't see it as some sort of rare, one in a million, cleverly crafted story that only comes by every a thousand years. I mean, no. But it genuinely was interesting. There are other stories and written moments throughout the franchise, but I don't feel like going over those right now. While the dev is not a writer, 
The writing definitely has its moments from time to time, but there are some instances where the writing just feels robotic. Like in 1980s mode, a lot of the written dialogue just feels overly flanderized and forced. It doesn't really flow as naturally as Osana's dialogue, which, yeah, there are times when the written dialogue is just cringy and dumb, but generally in 2020X, it tends not to be as bad. Characters are the crux of any story, and Yansim's characters, they are alright. We have Kakona, who, in spite of everything she's gone through, her dad going through debt and being an emotional wreck, causing her to do things that she's not comfortable with just to get money for him, she's still a bright and cheery girl who's very big on appreciating things. The headmaster and his mental downfall living with the deaths of 1980 and how he couldn't prevent it, the guidance counselor and her guilt for not being able to prevent an environment that would cause the delinquents to feel as if they would need to become delinquents. And even Ayano, for as many people who don't like her story, is, in my opinion, a very interesting character for all the reasons I've gone over in the story segment. Then, we have the rivals. They're cool. It's clear that they are meant to be simplistic characters that you kill. It's just a little weird that some of the side characters and the fucking guinea pig rival get more lore and fleshing out than the characters we've been waiting a decade for. But... I don't really take much issue to this at all. This is a stealth assassination game, and while I do think that some story would make them more interesting characters, personally I don't take issue with them being flat characters since, again, this is a game where you kill them and move on to the next. And honestly, they never really felt overly flanderized to me. Sure, you could hypothetically sum them up with their most basic personality trait, uh, Oka's uh, shy and reserve, uh, Asu is just like, you know, a sports tomboy bro, but they never really felt one note to me. Long before Osana's release, I was really ready to hate that character, but seeing the scripted event where she cringes at herself for saying something dumb and impulsive, and seeing her interactions with Raibru in general, just gave the character more charm that I could come to appreciate. It's not a lot, and it's not like the craziest shit in the world, but it's definitely more than the raging hothead that I was ready to be mad at. You know, until she gives her opinion on video games and the people that play them, then at that point it's just on site, bitch. Then again, there are rivals that are planned to be more fleshed out. Prime example being Megami, the final rival in the game, as she has a lot of ties to the lore, and honestly, she is very similar to Ayano. I even made a whole Tumblr post about how they could be foils of one another. In short, both live under circumstances that bar them from living normal lives, Ayano being her ill- being her curse, and Megami being the fact that she's the heir to the biggest company in Japan, so she pretty much has to be better than everyone else. However, Ayano rejects her circumstances and is an agent of chaos, while Megami accepts her circumstances and enforces order. But, as someone pointed out, they don't think that the characters are intentionally foils of one another, but it's still good storytelling overall. Which, I can agree to that. Also, Media and Muja are based, you f Whoop whoop! We made it to the end! Uh, this video was, uh, hell on earth to record. Well, it wasn't that bad to record, since... I, I, I just had to do entire segments of the script over and over again, but... None of you actually care about that. But, uh... Yeah, uh, again, these are just thoughts I wanted to get out there for a while. And, uh, in spite of everything that's happened, uh, this game still holds a place in my heart. I mean, literally just scroll down my channel. A vast majority of my videos are literally about this goddamn game. You know, until I moved on to other subjects and whatnot. And honestly, like, my entire time making videos on this game, I was grinding, uh, like, I, ha I made theory videos, I made animatics, and I pretty much burnt myself out making content that nobody wanted to watch, so. 
That was amazing. And I even, back when I was 15, made a video series asking Yandev if he was okay back when the drama during summer was really bad. Yeah, um, <laughs> those videos aged poorly. I think I can speak for a lot of longtime fans that I definitely have my memories with this, uh, with this simulator, you know, making artwork, which I've improved a lot, by the way. Like, I'm not gonna let anyone tell me otherwise. Do I sound cocky? Yeah, but I'ma own my progress. I should be proud. Um, a lot of the friends I've made are because of this game, and just, like, watching videos and just imagining, like, these fucking weird-ass scenarios with the characters, you know, like the autistic Spurg that I am. But, uh, good things come to an end. Um, and, uh, people don't turn out how you thought they were. I don't know where the fuck I'm going with this, but, uh, yeah, if you enjoyed, give it a like. Also, if you're of age and you're interested in my artwork, please consider donating to my Ko-Fi. Uh, that would be very much appreciated. And, yeah, I hope you have an amazing day. Thank you for watching.